late uncle picked me up at my grand's house when I was about eight years old and took me a blast in the country roads and I think that was a pivotal moment for me and my fascination with cars and motorsports and all things fast. He was competing in hill climbs and sprints back then. He used to take me to the Finty Hill Climb. Uh, he was one of the very first competitors to run Finty Hill Climb back in the 60s. He was a legend, to say the least. I think he was about 71 when he finally retired after 50 years of motorsport. So he was well loved and well known by a lot, a lot of people. So the Fiesta was purchased by my uncle in 97. Um, him and his daughter, my cousin Nicola, uh, they campaigned the car as a double athlete. And my uncle had used various different types of cars, mainly minis, his Mark II Escort, but the Fiesta was a, a new venture for him, a new, a new type of road car to try on the hills. I would say it's the car that he owned the longest, so he must have fairly fell in love with it. Uh, he kept it in his garage uh, under a cover majority of the time. The only time it really came out of the garage was to go and compete. Uh, never took it out any other time. Although it was road registered, tax them being insured, uh, it was only ever driven on the road to events. He had a good love affair with that car. I purchased my own Fiesta um, around about 2001 and uh, my uncle hadn't raced his car the previous year. It was in his garage in various parts. Um, so I actually built up my car to go racing with him and helped him build the car that's behind me now for the 2003 hill climbing sprint season and I spent many an evening after work going out and helping him rebuild the car in order to try and get it ready. One of the best paper cuttings I've got here is uh, from 2004. Uh, a very young, fresh-faced me with no hair and Brian standing next to me over the bonnet of this car, basically like we are standing now. Uh, and the, the clipping basically states that uh, myself and Brian had double entered Brian's car on a Sunday because unfortunately I crushed mines on the Saturday uh, and was unable to continue with my car so Brian being the generous soul that he is uh, let me double enter with him and that was the first time I'd competed with this car and run that car instead of my own one. It was really the first, I'd driven it before but the first time I'd driven it to compete and it was completely different to how my car was set up. The brakes felt terrible. Um, the car sm smoked quite a lot. When I drove it at the hill climb that day, my main objective was to try and beat Brian in his own car, but unfortunately that failed because uh, Brian was just too accustomed to it, too quick for me. Getting in the car now and driving it now certainly brings back the memories to that day.
roughly 2008 when my uncle retired from motorsport. Never saw the car again, had no idea where it had gone. In 2018, the car did appear at Fintry. I knew that the car was still local at the time, but um, I didn't, uh, didn't really know who had it. When I first saw the advert on Facebook, I was tagged in and the first thing I noticed was a registration, RSE 714W. I knew right away it was Brian's old car. The colour, which, funny to believe, is that the, my Fiesta I had and competed against Brian and his Fiesta, my Fiesta was this colour in 2003-2004 and then this car was blue and white. It was blue at front, white in the middle, blue at back. So the previous owner, who's done the rest restoration and rebuilt the car, chose to paint it the green that my car actually was, which made me want it even more uh, because it's so reminiscent of the Fiesta I used and competed with at the same time as Mum. I wasn't pestering the guy, but I was trying to see just how determined he was to sell the vehicle. And then the conversation that we were having on text message seemed to dry up a little because I couldn't get a definitive answer if it was actually going to be for sale or if he just wanted me to come and look at it, thinking I was just wanting to reminisce on my uncle's old car, but I genuinely wanted to buy it. Two weeks passed. During this time, my uncle was very ill in hospital, uh, quite bedridden, uh, just coming to the end of his life. And uh, I'd actually told my cousin Nicola that I'd been inquiring about the car to see if I could buy it back and get it back into the family. And uh, unfortunately, my uncle passed away before I got a chance to do that. The day of my uncle's funeral, and the car was actually presented on the TV screen as part of the service. And when I saw that, I just decided, right, I've got to get it. I need to get this car back. Got home from funeral that day, looked up motorsport auctions, couldn't find the advert. It's gone. So I thought, he's maybe sold it. So I sent him another message. He says, yeah, still got it. Took the advert down, but you're more than welcome to come and look at it. The following Monday, after the weekend, I'd arranged to go around. The car sitting in the garage, he pushed out of the garage. Uh, it was hard to believe, in my eyes, that I was sitting there looking at my uncle's car. I remember the price he had in his advert, so he didn't move on his price, exchanged money, exchanged the documents into my name, and uh, I says to the guy, I'll be back in an hour with a trailer. And that's how I acquired the vehicle. The key ring on the ignition key was still my uncle's old uh, Nigel Mansell keyring helmet that he must have had since the 80s. The general car and all its bodywork, it's still the same, it's still the same dashboard, it's still the same steering wheel, it's still the same speedometer, rev counter. So you just know that I'm in, I know that I'm in that old Fiesta again. The only downside I think would have been if I'd managed to get it earlier, uh, before he passed, I could have taken him out for one last blast of his car, which I know he would have been happy with. Uh, he would be over the moon to know that the car's back in the family and here to stay this time. <laughs>